that uh, my, my bracelet just rubbed my uh, passenger side nipple, my right side nipple there, and yeah, that's, uh, that's very sensitive. So um, that's kind of what this video is about. We're going to address that for me and for you. All right, everybody, I've got a pretty important video that I wanted to bring to you right now. It's kind of an emergency situation, not for me, but I was thinking that it might be for one of you. And I want to address something that is definitely, definitely not discussed enough, nor is it discussed properly. And that is the use of an AI or a CIRM. I know people are like, well, don't take your CIRM. And there's other people that are like, well, stay off the AI. And then there's a lot of people that are like, take a lot of AI and just destroy your estrogen. Because that's the way it should be. <laughs> All of that is wrong. And all of that may be completely wrong for you individually and specifically. So immediately, let me give you an example. For me, I don't use a lot of AI. I can maintain my TRT dose of 250 tests a week, ciporinanthate typically, plus 180 milligrams of DECA a week. Now, DECA does not aromatize into estrogen quite at the rate of testosterone, but it still does a little bit, but it will affect your prolactin. A lot of people blast out their estrogen thinking, oh my gosh, my estrogen is so high, I've got to lower it. But it wasn't estrogen to begin with, it was just raised prolactin. You've got to be able to know the difference, and sometimes you won't until you get your blood work done. Okay, now, here's the thing. My use of AI is going to be different than your use of AI. Your need for an AI is going to be different than his use for an AI. You see what I'm saying? It's very individual. Now, my personal school of thought for myself, for using for my body in my blasts and crews, as well as how I advise my clients, is very different. I don't want you taking an AI right off the bat. Let's see how you're feeling right off the bat. First, because you may not need an AI, even on a blast of 500 milligrams of test a week, even up to 750 milligrams of test a week, plus 500 milligrams of DECA, plus 50 milligrams of Diana Ball a day, I only needed 0.25 milligrams of Arimidex once a week. Yes, that's correct. 0.25 milligrams of Arimidex once a week. Now that's also in conjunction with 60 IUs of HCG once a week to maintain testicular atrophy from occurring for me because I uh, mentally, I just don't like how that feels nor looks. You know? Now, I've tried everything with HCG. This video is not about HCG, but I've done everything. I've done HCG every day. I've done HCG every day of pinning, twice a week, three times a week. I've done HCG once a year, like a big blast for a week, once a year when I felt like my I was at the end of, at the, end of the line and I needed it. <laughs> but over time, through my personal trial and errors, I have found that 60 IUs of HCG once a week is really my sweet spot. It keeps my testicles from atrophying too much. It maintains that comfort level where I don't feel like I'm going to lose a testicle up my abdomen. You don't want that to happen. I'll tell you that story later. But the idea is, it is so individual that you've got to figure out what works best for you. Because far too frequently, all of these doctors, clinics, and professionals in the industry are advising you improperly. They are blasting you with AI. They're like, hey, take one Arimidex every other day, take half an Arimidex every day. That is a standard protocol for TRT. Oh my gosh, man. How many of you guys are feeling lethargic and slow and sluggish and tired, low libido? You're like, well, I've got low T, so I'm going to have low libido. And they're blasting you with Arimidex and Aromacid. And you're like, well, I guess this is what I should expect. No, no. It doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to live life that way. It shouldn't be that way. I'm currently working with someone right now, and maybe he'll chime in on this video, where his estrogen has been a roller coaster. But there's also so many other factors involved, such as prolactin issues, dopamine. There's a lot involved in what we're doing. Now, if you're not ready to consider all of these factors in your enhancement, then you're not ready to be enhanced. You shouldn't be taking this road because it can lead to a really rough time. Depression, suicidal thoughts, incredible anxiety can ruin your relationships, it can ruin your marriage, it can ruin your sex life, it can ruin a lot of things about your life. So that's why you wanna do it the right way. And unfortunately, even a lot of these professionals, they don't know what they're doing. I watch all the vids of the professional anabolic doctors, 
And I know they've got great information that they're reading off of the script and, and reading off of their paper. And they're telling you that this is the, this is the, this is, no. Are they doing it? Have they used it all? Have they been working with clients who have been using these things as protocol for 20 years? I don't know. Maybe. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Have you? No. No? No. They said no. They said no. I've been advising clients for over 20 years. Now, although I chose to stay completely natural for 23 years while bodybuilding, I coached many clients who wanted to go towards enhancement. So I had to learn, based on anecdotal evidence and personal feedback, what worked best for each of my clients as we went along. I did not advise them on things I didn't know anything about. I've been on DECA three years straight now. I take a break every so often. I'm actually just getting back on right now. Part of this video is inspired by that. Ooh, I can feel my nipples getting sensitive. Serious. Yeah, they're definitely getting sensitive. Ooh. Hmm. No, I'm not sitting here rubbing my nipples, but I am going to let you know openly that uh, my, my bracelet just rubbed my uh, passenger side nipple, my right side nipple there. And yeah, that's, uh, that's very sensitive. So um, that's kind of what this video is about. We're going to address that for me and for you. Now, here's the thing, guys. Estrogen plays such an important role in your body. Now, I want to let you know that this medical reference range that most doctors and clinics will keep you within isn't really ideal for bodybuilding or for building muscle or for maintaining the best life that you want, the best version of you. This reference range is a safety net. Now, that reference range for estradiol is like 7.6 to uh, 42.6. Now, the problem is, is I've always been within that reference range. I've always been within that range, but I have felt like garbage. I have felt terrible in that reference range. And I found out over time that I needed to be outside of that reference range, not below it, because that is depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, and a lot of horrible, horrible feelings inside. Being outside of that reference range is a little more of that overall anxiety excitability, but it's also slightly more of the feeling of wellness and well-being, and you're kind of feeling a little better. You get a little higher libido, you maintain that, and your body is going to really appreciate that higher estrogen while building muscle. But inside that reference range, that's a big gap, 7.6 to 42.6, and they may be telling you that you're fine when you're not. But here's the thing, too many people just jump on AI. Too many people just pop a couple, pop half a gram of half a milligram of Rimadex, you know, whatever it is that, that your doctor has now advised you based on your blood work, and then all you crash it and you tank it, and you're all the way on the other end. That's terrible. I have had crashed estrogen and it was a nightmare. And I do mean a nightmare. It was horrible. I'm never gonna do that again. So therefore, I maintain higher estrogen. Now, anytime I go on a blast, anytime I adjust my protocol in any way. I don't add in an AI right away. Not at all. Not at all. I wait. Now, I know some of you do develop gyno very quickly. That's the problem. I am not prone to gyno. Um, I shave my head, so I don't even know if I'm prone to hair loss. Who knows? But I'm not prone to gyno or acne. But I'm a very emotional person. I'm also an empath, and I'm in tune with my emotions. I like to watch chick flicks. Oh, man, that movie Leap Year really got to me. I enjoy a good cry. All right, moving on. Now, should you take an AI or a CIRM? Now, when I first started bodybuilding back in 2000, oh man, how old was I? 1997. Oh shit, not 2000. When I first started bodybuilding back in 1997, yes, I'm 42 years old. I was 16 and a half, just about 17 at the time. My first trainer was a man by the name of Joe Dodd. He was a professional bodybuilder. His, his gym was called Man's World in Trenton, New Jersey. Everybody there trained as a bodybuilder. Whether they competed or not, they trained as a bodybuilder and they trained together. Everybody was there doing the same thing. Everybody, everybody had the same goals. Everybody was cheering each other on. It was awesome. And as a skinny, tiny, small-framed, hard-gaining ectomorph, I was in heaven. And my first coach, Joe Dodd, says to me, day one, Adam, you're going to want to look like these guys. And I said, I do. I do. Because my stepbrother was already a bodybuilder and he was Mr. Trenton, Mr. New Jersey. So he was enhanced and he looked amazing. Looked amazing. And I said, yeah, I want to look like my brother. And then Joe says, oh, there's a poster of your brother on the wall. 
And that was really cool. And then all my favorite bodybuilders I grew up emulating. Frank Zane and Dave Draper and Arnold and Serge and all these other guys. They were on the walls, but a lot of them had signed these posters because they had been through the gym. They had worked out there. First thing he says is, you know, Adam, you're really small. Thanks. That's exactly what I wanted to hear because that's why I was there, to not be small. But he says, Adam, you're really small. You're going to want to look like them, and I know you're going to want to go enhanced. But here's what I want you to do. Promise me that whatever you do, whatever you decide, first, you're going to blow your genetics out of the water. And that's the term he used, and I'll never forget it. And I actually made a promise to him, the late Joe Dodd, that I would push myself as long as I could, as far as I could, and as hard as I could, naturally, till I ever considered anything else. Well, that lasted 23 years for me because I continued to make incredible gains. I didn't always look the best. I didn't always feel the best. I didn't have the best strength, but I made incredible gains as a total package, building a foundation. I never looked the way I wanted to look. That's the truth. As a hard-gaining ectomorph, I never looked like Frank Zane. That's my dream. That's my goal. To this day, at 42 years old, but I also lost function of my organs and I died in 2003. They gave me two months left to live and I lost everything. I lost every pound plus more. And the doctor said I was dying. And I was. I was as good as dead. But through the grace of God, I got through that experience. And I'm telling you that as a walking testament. Then I was in a major car accident, lost function on my right side. All my nerves were impinged and I was in severe pain. And then for the last 18 years, I've needed a spinal fusion due to an injury in 2003, and I continued to put it off and put it off and put it off, and I just had my spinal fusion. There's a lot of other things that have happened in my life. I've been shot at, and I should have died, but I survived. I've been knifed twice in gang fights. I've been jumped, beaten, and more. And I have a major brain injury. So life is about overcoming those obstacles. That's why I have overcome tattooed on my chest. Because I will always overcome. And that is how I advise my clients to always overcome together. We will. Back to the topic at hand. Huh, that's like, a, hold on. Now my point in telling you about my first trainer in the bodybuilding gym and all the old school guys was this. Something that I learned that all those old school guys would do is take a Novadex every couple of days. I don't know if it was 10 or 20 or more, but they would use Novadex as their estrogen control because there wasn't all this obs obsession with AIs. It just wasn't there. Even though these guys were taking Diana Ball that raises your estrogen levels, that really smacks a punch in your estrogen, you know? A lot of the other supplements they were taking were very different than the way we take them now. Different doses, different brands, different manufacturers, and especially different potencies. But a lot of those guys would just take Novadex. They weren't hopping on high doses of Arimidex. They weren't hopping on high doses of Aromacin. Novadex did what they needed it to do. It maintained their gyno and it kept their estrogen levels at bay. But I know that's what they did. And I still know a bunch of old school bodybuilders that swear by half a tab of tamoxifen every few days or a 20 a week. That's common practice with them. But now we've got all these guys jumping on TRT thinking they know what they're doing, thinking they should even be doing this when most of you shouldn't, especially all you young guys that are just tanking your own bodies and killing your own natural pr production and your own innate potential. I mean, look at the liver king. The liver king is so natty and stupid. <laughs> That's the, the funniest thing in the world, Liver King. Liar King. That's another video. Estrogen control is important. But I like to do is this. I have my maintenance pretty dialed in for TRT. Now remember guys, TRT is test. You want to throw a couple other things in there? Okay, I get it. But that's really not just TRT. Now it's TRT enhanced. Whether it's an oral or whether it's an injectable. There's a lot of debate on the scheduling. We can get to that in a later time. But what I like to do is when I'm getting ready for a blast, I know the properties of most of the compounds out there. So I always know that I'm going to be taking test as my base. Test will always be my base forever. And it should be yours as well. And if it's not, I think you are doing your body an extreme disservice and you're kind of acting dumb. Test should be your foundation. Foundational every single time. Test. Then from there, you're going to build a cycle. You can build off of testosterone derivatives, DHT derivatives, or nandrolones. They all have different properties. Some do not aromatize. Some aromatize at a very high rate. Others have high levels of DHT. You know the drill. You've got to look at your cycle as a whole, and you've got to learn your body before you even start to cycle. 
you have to know how your body reacts to DHT derivatives, to nandrolones, to 19 nors, to the testosterone derivatives, like a Dianabol, like an EQ. You've got to learn these things. The first step is dialing in your body's response to testosterone alone. If you jump on testosterone plus anything else for your first cycle, I don't think that's smart. Because the reason I want you to start basic is to learn your body. Okay? I do not condemn nor condone any type of enhancement. Obviously, I did 23 years naturally for a reason. Obviously, I'm enhanced now for a reason. But none of you young guys who haven't even done this for 10 years naturally should be jumping on gear. Period. End of story. Do it naturally. Okay, maybe 10 years is a long time because I know. I know. That's really hard. Do three to five years naturally. Push everything you can. Your diet should be the best it can be. Your training should be the best it can be. Your, your every other supplementation should be the best it can be. And you've tried multiple different avenues to get there. You've learned it. Five years down the road, you're like, okay, I'm ready. I built my foundation. I'm ready for enhancement. Start with test. Testosterone. Now you learn how your body reacts to just increased levels of test. You may hop on test and go, whoa, I got puffy guy no nipples. Wow, I'm crying all the time. I'm just so sad. I'm just so sad. You never know. You may not react well, but you may find, yeah, 250 test, 300 test. All right, I know we're already outside of a TRT range. 500 test. So you're doing test and you find maybe a year of test. You do your 200, 150, depends on where you're at, whatever. Your TRT dose, you learn your body, you realize, okay, got my body dialed in. I know how my body responds to estrogen and prolactin especially. Remember, things like opioids, kratom, lots of eggs, they raise prolactin. So if you are doing those things and you're adding in other compounds, your prolactin may be really high, causing slight estrogenic issues and symptoms, but you're thinking it's estrogen, you don't know what you're doing. So you're screwing your body up already. So stop and listen. You get that test down. You got it, you're good. You did a year of it, you're feeling good. You did your cruise, oh, you add in a blast of 500 tests. So you did 200 tests for eight months, let's say, and you got a good foundational experience. And you're like, you know what? Now I'm gonna do um, eight to 12 weeks of test at 500. Yeah, that's a, that's a big jump, that's a big boy jump. That's gonna make, <laughs> you're really gonna feel that. I mean, honestly, that's not what I would recommend, but I know it's what a lot of guys do, so that's why I said that. Now you've got a foundation of cruising, and now you've got an experience of a blast, and now you've learned how your body has reacted. You've done your blood work three or four times within that whole experience. And of course, you're gonna have an overlap, so what I would suggest is you do your blood work before your cruise, at the end of your cruise, and right before your blast, and then obviously coming off of your blast, and now you've got a really good perspective of three different times that you've done your blood work. That's great. Now you know what your body needs to maintain proper estrogen levels. These are all the things that you've gotta be ready to factor in before you even entertain going into the enhanced lifestyle. So let's fast forward and talk about why I'm making this video. Well, I'm making this video because my nipples are currently sensitive right now and I can feel something happening pretty big pretty quickly. Do you wanna know why? It's because of this. I've already built that foundation of everything else. Okay, now it's my turn to understand all the other compounds as a coach and as a bodybuilder. I don't bodybuild to compete. I'm an ex-model. I did years of fitness modeling as a musician and an actor. Now, I'm trying all the other compounds so that I can advise my clients from personal experiences so that I also know how I'm supposed to be advising people based on what I went through. And that at least is a good starting point. Now I'm currently wrapping up four weeks on a blast. That blast consists of 750 test and anthate a week, 300 trend ace a week, 300 EQ a week, and 50 milligrams of Dianabol a day for four weeks. Now that's four different compounds. That's a lot. I do not advise that. I do not suggest it. I do not think that you should take that. I do not promote it. But that's four different compounds. Test, Trend, Ace, EQ, Dianabol. I think I probably messed up the order, but whatever. Now I wrapped up four weeks. Dianabol, out. Gone. Now I'm three. But because of my spinal issues, I'm having a hard time with my back and my legs, especially my hips. So for me, by not taking DECA all year round, I really suffer. 
and I mean I suffered badly. Now even with the 50 milligrams of Dianabol every day for four weeks, I was only taking 0.25 milligrams of Arimidex once a week. On pin one for the week, I pin three times a week, Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday mornings. I do take that two day break at the end of the week and I'm okay with that because I don't do a whole lot during that period of time. HCG, 60 IUs on day one every week. That works well for me. I feel a good balance. I could adjust it a little more, but I don't really need to right now. You see what I'm saying, guys? Like, there's so much more to this process than most people think. This is why it's so much easier for all you cowards to just claim fake natty status. And you're probably still doing it wrong. Although a lot of you look great. A lot of you look great. You do. I'll, I'll give it to you. But you're still a fucking coward. And a liar. And a pussy. So that's the video, guys. My name is Adam. I go by Coach Hard Gains. I've been coaching for over 20 years. I've been bodybuilding for over 25 years. I grew up around the golden era physiques, and it was amazing. Let's bring them back, because that is what I love. That is beauty in motion. I am dedicated to bringing you the truth through transparency so that you know how you can achieve your goals without all the bullshit that the fake natties throw in your face. We are going to Pull back the curtain and let them know that we don't buy it anymore. So stop buying their products. That's next, guys. All right? Now you can call me Coach Hard Gains. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. Tap the bell. I'll see you in the next video.